tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build this React application. So this application is built in React. And you can see right here, this application is built in React. Is also having the back end in Spring Books, returning a list of products, and we have the data stored in MySQL database. Now, this is a complete CRUD application where you can add, remove, edit, and delete a product. For instance, if I click on new and I add a product, I call it test product, for instance, and I add the description to be new product, and the brand is, let's say, Kyneton, and the date of acquisition is today and the price is $45.9. Add product and you can see the test product we added right here in number 15. We can also go ahead to delete the products. But before then, let me show you how we can edit. So I'm going to edit this. I added edited. So I'm going to say by kind son and I'm going to update. You can see it updates right here. Again, you can go ahead to delete a product by clicking on the delete icon and you can delete the product. This is a complete CRUD application built in React and also having the back end built in Spring Boot. I'm going to show you step by step how to build the API, how to build the UI, connect it to the two of them and be able to send data between the React application and the Spring Boot application. So if this has been informative for you, please remember to subscribe to my channel. If you have any challenges following this tutorial, please leave me a comment. I'm going to try as much as, to, as, much as possible to respond to your comment. So please subscribe by clicking on that subscribe button below. Now the complete application is available on my GitHub repository. So if you go to GitHub and you, you go to my repository, I'll put a link to the to this project in the description of, of this video so you can see the product app spring api and the product app react ui so this is a product app react ui you can see it has only two components that we actually build app bar and product bar and of course if you go to the react you can see the app bar and the product bar just two components is very very easy so if you have challenges, just open the code and take a look. Okay, so let's go ahead to get started. Again, we are going to be using Material UI for React to build the to this, create the styling for the UI. Let's go ahead to get started with the Spring Boot API. So the first thing we want to do is to go to Spring Initializer, and we are going to we are going to set up a new project in Spring Initializer. So we are building the Spring Boot API first. So I'm going to say the group is come but kind on the genius. And let's call this React UI, and the, the other one will be Spring API. And this is going to be demo. Oh, sorry, this cannot be React UI. This is Spring API. Okay, so we are building the API first. Demo API for products. Okay, so this is what we have, and I think we need some dependencies. First, we need a web dependency with because we it's going to be a web application. We also need MySQL dependency because we are going to be storing data in MySQL. I will need Lombok because I will have to have some boiler uh, plate code generated for me. And I think we need the JPA, the Spring Data JPA, because we are going to be connecting to MySQL. Um, so this is basically all we need for now. I'm going to go to generate. So we generated the product, uh, the project, and I'm going to unzip it, right click and unzip. So next I'm going to open this project in IntelliJ. Okay, so from IntelliJ, I'm going to click on open and I'm going to choose in my download folder, the project we just created in Spring Initializer. I'm going to click on open and the project opens right here. So we are going to be creating a few things. First, we need a number of classes. So I'm going to first say new Java class. This is going to be our base model and this is going to be the product. And we will need the repository. I'm going to call it product repository. We are going to need the service. So I'm going to create a new file. Uh, product service. Of course, the repository will be an interface, but we are going to come back to it in a minute. Uh, product service, and I think finally we need the controller, product controller, and I'm going to move this into this package. So all of them will be in the same package. Okay, so let's go ahead to create the fields in our 
product uh, model. So the first thing I'm going to do is annotate this with an entity annotation and also with a data annotation. And the fields here are going to be five fields or six, six of them. So ID, name, description, brand, acquisition, date, and price for this product. So at this point, we've completed creating the product model. I'm going to next, I'm going to create the repository, annotate it with the at repository annotation. And it's going to actually be an interface that extends the JPA repository interface, JPA repository, and the class, the model will be product, because this means we are trying to retrieve uh, manage data, uh, the product data in the database. And the primary key field is long, is a type long. So we need the service as well. So I'm going to annotate with a service annotation. So we need the methods for insert, delete, update, and sell and uh, find all. So in this case, I will simply copy the contents of this and paste it. And I'm going to allow you some time to copy as well. So you can actually see that the first thing we do here is to wire in or to inject the product repository. And we have all this method get products simply says repository that find all get product a single product return repository that find by id add product update product and delete products so it's, it's quite easy to understand now we go to the product controller so the controller method simply exposes the routes or the url uh, not the url but the actual url paths for different uh, operations so I'm going to also paste it uh, and then I'll explain it to you, but I think it will be quite easy. First, I'm going to annotate this with at rest controller. Again, you can also pause this video and copy actually uh, and copy across what you have on my files. Otherwise, you can also go to my GitHub repository and simply use the existing code. So these are the repository methods. This is product service. Uh, I'm injecting the product service. I'm doing a constructor injection. This is slash products returns all the products, get products, product slash ID returns a single product. We have in this case, we are trying to um, update a single product. We have uh, add a product and also delete. So in the case of add, I, I want to return add a product. I want to return the newly created product. Now, if you look at this method, you see I have added add cross origin annotation to different methods i think you can go ahead to add the cross origin to to the actual to the class so that in that case you don't add it to all the methods but this is fine this is fine now i need to add the configuration for my sql database so for you to connect to my sql you need some configuration i'm going to just add it right here so we have product db uh, but i already have this product db in my system so i'm going to in my database server so I'm going to just call it product react db. Okay, so if we run this application, we should be able to have it up, but I need to have a few sample products um, uh, uh, inserted into the database uh, for a start. There's a number of ways, there are a number of ways we can do that, but I think the easiest way is to simply go to my repository, go to, so the Spring App API, you can simply go to src main, resources and you see data.sql you see all this uh this insert insert statement just copy it and go to mysql go to mysql workbench i'm using mysql workbench i'm going to create a new database if i'm too fast please you can play this video at a speed of 0.75 or maybe you pause the video from time to time so the name of the database is product react db that is what we call it i'm going to click on apply apply close product react db we are going to now insert some items here product db.product actually product react db.product but let's see there is no product created there so what i'm going to do is to run the application so that it will create the table product. So in Spring Boot, simply go to the main application class and simply run it. If you run it, it's going to either create or update the database and create the uh, the table in the database. In this case, it's product. Okay, so now if we go to our database, we are will be able to see the product uh, table. So maybe if I refresh, I should see it. 
so it didn't create so to make it create i'm going to go here and say ddl auto is equal to update so i'm going to just rerun the application ddl auto to be updated so it's going to update the schema so if we go back to my sql go back to my sql workbench and i refresh this let's see we should have the table created right here you can see product so if we run this query now, it's going to insert the items into the product uh, table. So I'm going to run and it seems it works. So if I select by right clicking and select 1000 rows, you can see that the product is selected here. Next, I'm going to try to go to the URL to see if I can retrieve this product by going to slash products in HTTP localhost port 8080. So if I go to HTTP localhost port 8080 slash product, I think we should have, as you can see, we have a list of products we have inserted into our database. And that means that our API is working perfectly well. If you have challenges up to this point, please write me a comment immediately in the comment box below this video. And if this is informative, please uh, remember to just subscribe and also like the video. So what next? We've completed building the API. The next thing we want to do now is we want to move to build the React UI. To build the React UI, we are going to be using the Material UI. We are going to be also, also be using Material Icon. We are going to be using MPX. Uh, command to create a new project. So I'm going to go to terminal and say new terminal and I'm going to run the command to create a new React project. Clear my console and run the command npx create React app and we are going to call it React, React-UI and once we create this project we are going to open it in VS Code. So it takes a few seconds, let's just wait for it to complete. Okay, so we have the uh, the application created. So I'm going to simply go to IntelliJ uh, VS Code and say open, and I'm going to choose React UI and say open. So this is going to open the new project we just created. And if you want, we can just also run it just to make sure everything is working. I'm going to my terminal and player i'm going to say npm run start so it's going to start up this application so this is where we are at this point so i'm going to go back to react and let's go to the app component which is this app component and i'm going to simply remove everything i'm going to remove everything here and we have blank screen so let's go back to check blank screen so to just to make sure that we're on track so i'm going to just add a h1 and say Welcome to React and save everything. And now we have it right here. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is to add the material UI. So to add material UI, I'm going to, I'm going to the material UI website. I'm going to just go to this one. And sorry, I simply go to installation. Installation, you can see it tells us run this. So I'm going to run it. Um, so let's go to React and I'm going to open a new terminal and I'm going to go ahead to paste this command. So it starts to install these dependencies and I think we will also need something else. So if we go to the package.json, we are going to see the, we should have the material UI installed. So we have the material UI right here. We will also need the material icon. So if I go to the search and, and search for material icon, material icons, we have it right here. And this is the installation command. I'm going to copy and go back to React and just paste it there and hit enter. Okay, so the next thing we want to do here is to create the first component and that component we are going to be creating is the app bar component. So this is like our header component. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead to create the app bar component. I'm going to right click. Uh, first, I would like to create a new folder and call it components. And here I'm going to right click and then create new file app bar.js. And now we are going to go to material UI to see if we can find uh, a navigation bar or maybe a kind of header. And to do that, I'm going to go to search. I'm going to say app bar, and it says basic app bar here. It should be the first one. 
Uh, you can also try out any one you want, but I think we can keep it simple by taking the first one. So I'm going to copy the code and I will paste it. I'm going to just paste it right here. Do you like to... No, 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 this is not. So I'm going to right click and paste. Let's just make sure everything is fine. So we have the app. Oh, so the name is, okay, button app bar, that is fine. So I'm going to save everything, file save all, and I'm going to the app. Instead of having this, we want to have the app bar component. So the name is button bar, uh, button app bar, I think. Okay, button app bar. So let's save everything and let's go to the UI to check what we have in the UI. Okay, yes. So I'm going to close everything to avoid confusion. So this is where we are currently, uh, just to prove you prove it to you this is h1 so this is where we came from uh welcome to to my tutorials uh if i save everything that is going to appear under here okay so with angular material with sorry not angular material with react material ui we've added the navigation bar the next thing we want to do now is to create the product component and the product component is the component that we hold the list of products. So to do that, I'm going to still go to the components uh, folder and create a new uh, component and call it products. Okay, so this is where we are going to now place our code, the, the code for creating a new project, a new product. So the first thing you want to do here is you want to create a functional component. This is going to be a functional component. If you are using React for the first time, please remember to add the extension simple React snippets. So you have it installed so that it can help you do a bit of uh, generating some of the code snippets. So if I say RFC, uh, you can see that it creates a functional component for me. Okay, so what next do we want to do? We want to have uh, the table of products uh, created but there's a number of things we want to do first so let me just give room here okay so we want to first create the variable that is going to hold the product coming from the api so i'm going to create i'm going to use state so i'm going to say const we have products and of course the function the setup for it set products set products is equal to use state and of course we need to import use state from react and the initial value is going to be empty so now we need a function that is going to populate this list of products and i'm going to write that function right now use we are going to be using the use effect hook to make this api call so i'm going to of course we are going to be using axios sorry i forgot to mention npm install axios so Axios is one of the APIs for making requests from React. We also have Fetch, but Axios uh, seems to be better. Okay, so we have Axios.get and we specify the URL HTTP localhost. I think I should just copy it from the URL, from the browser. Uh, I think we can type it localhost for 8080 and slash products right so this is coming as a promise so it's going to be and dot and dot then and we get a response so when the response comes we are going to be using it to set the product so i'm going to say set product and provide it the response dot data and we need some dependencies here which is in this case is going to be empty dependencies so it's going to be uh, React dependency list is going to be empty. Now, how do we know if this product has come? I think it's better we just do a console log to, console log to see if we have the product. So I'm going to say console log, put log, and I'm going to say response.data. So let's go back to the UI. Let me open the inspector and let's see if we have the data coming. So let me keep the console open. And here I'm going to just save everything. And let's go back to check. Okay, for now we've not actually called this function uh, get product. So here, instead of returning the product, we are going to be actually returning a table container to hold the the table. So I'm going to say table container. Actually, we can go to the material UI website and actually copy this 
So the component is going to be paper. So this is like the style or the template or the theme. I want it to be not the full screen, but to have a width of 70. So I'm going to add a style is equal to width of 70%. So this is a container. For now, nothing shows. Uh, if we go back to our UI, nothing changes. So let's just go. Uh, nothing changes, but we need to add the product component to our app component. So under the button bar, we can simply add the product component. So let's save everything and take a look at the UI to see what we have. So it says paper is not defined, so we have to actually import paper. So we are going to import it from Material UI. So I'm going to say import paper from at m i m u i slash material. So save everything, and if we go back, we should have the error go away. We should actually have it in the products, and I'm going to save all. So here it says it is having problem. Um, network error why localhost slash products as you can see there is a typo here so let me just correct it and let's save everything okay so we have this uh application running and you can see here we have the in the console is actually retrieving all the products in react into react so now we have completed the first part we have been able to communicate with the app with the api and retrieve the products and, and paste them and have them available in React. Now we want to display the, the data in a table. So I could also go to the material UI and look for tables. Uh, let's see if we can get table uh, material UI. So let's see, let me look for table. Uh, so we have a number of them. So, okay, let's try to use this one. So show code and let's see. So um, table container, we have table head and table body. So let's copy across. I'm going to copy this table container and then I'm going to use it. So replacing my own table container. And of course, if you want to just see the sample data, we can copy all of this and paste, copy all of this. And of course we need to have all these import statements. So I'm going to copy them and paste as well. And I replace the paper in we already have paper so i'm going to just copy the remaining ones so i'm going to paste it right here so table table body and so on so just to see that we have the data let me just copy also the this data here and then let's just see that the table displays uh let me go back to react and i'm going to paste this here okay table container has already been declared uh line eight seven uh, so I'm going to just remove it, remove the first one and let's save all. So go back to my UI and we have the table here, as you can see. So at least our table is working. Let's go to do a bit of styling and I'm going to go to the table container. I'm going to add a style and I fall to, fall to weeds. Uh, it's going to be 70% and let me just see that okay it reduces to 70 percent i'll also want to do one thing i'll also like to center the table on the screen so to do that i'm going to simply enclose the table container into a box so i'm going to enclose this table container into a box that is a flex container so i'm going to paste this so this is box at the other end i'm going to say slash box so what's happening here is i created a box display flex justify content is center and the table is right inside so if we go ahead to save all and so it gives us an error it says box is not defined so we are going to go ahead to import box i think box is also coming from uh mui material so we are going to just add it here so if we go back you see that the table is centralized right now because if i close this it also shifts downwards i don't know why Okay, so I've adjusted the, uh, the, the height to be 50 VH, so this is just fine. Okay, now instead of having all of these items, we want to use our actual items coming from our API, okay? So to do that, we are going to simply change up the table header and then change up the uh, uh, table body as well. Okay, so the table header, in this case, the, the, the first one will be ID. The second one is going to be name and the third one is going to be, let's see, 
The third one is going to be description and the fourth one is going to be brand followed by acquisition date and the last one is going to be price I think yes so I'm going to just copy this and paste it so I can change it to price it's going to be price one two three four five six so now we go to the table body one thing I'd like us to do is to map through the product so it's going to be it's going to be product.map so this here I'm going to replace with the product.map and for each of them we have products but before we map before we map before we map i'm going to check that the product the i'm going to check that the product is not null that it actually contains data so i'm going to say here product is not equal to null and then we are going to say product.map and then this is where we place the content so here otherwise uh otherwise it's going to be i'm going to put in another div here loading so in this case when it's null okay so i'm going to collapse this so you can see that this item here will be what we have if there is contents in that case we no longer need this one this is what is returned so let me just cut this. So product.map, what do we have? We have the product and we also have the index. We're going to be using this index later on. So here we are going to now return the table. So basically what we are doing is if so if there is product, we are going to map and then return all of this. Uh, I can't really collapse. We are going to return all of this all the way to this point otherwise we are going to just return a div showing loading okay so the next thing we want to do is to actually use our product instead of using this uh sample product so how many cells do we need we need one two three four five six so i'm just going to copy and paste two more so let me just copy and paste two more so copy and paste these two um so we have should here it should be product.id I think it should be product.id and the next one is going to be products.name and the next one is going to be products.description the next one is going to be product.brand and we have product.acquisition date and finally we have product.price now I'm suspecting this might give some kind of error because we have the price to be uh, a number but what is required here is uh is our text so let's save everything just make sure everything works fine it says row is assigned but never used that is not a problem uh error is says row is assigned but never used where oh row is assigned but never used okay i see i see so we have this key i don't think we need this key do we need all of this no we don't need this i don't think so let's save everything and it says row is assigned but never using 6316 oh row.name wow i never saw this let's just remove this from here and save everything it's to 118 row is also assigned here so i just uh it's going to be product.id i think that should be the key save everything i think this should be fine go back here so we have all our products uh displaying but there's a bit of uh, some problem here so let's go to change the vh the view height to be 100 for instance so i'm going to save everything and it's just fine all right so of course you can we can change it to 80. we have a few warnings logo is defined but never used in up the js 18 i don't like seeing warnings so i'm going to remove this it says um 22 13 rows assigned but never used in product so we delete this because it's not used and what else um, do we have anymore so i'm going to save create data assigned but never used in product 12 14 yes we are going to remove this as well um 
created a sign but never used so save everything so everything is perfectly okay now we have everything displayed i would like to align this to the left i think so let's see if we can align it to the left uh so we have all this align right align right i think we can just leave it but i think you can do it if you have the time please just change it to align left but uh, for me i think i'll just leave it that way so the next thing we want to do now we want to start implementing the actions to be able to add edit and delete so the first one i would like us to implement is the delete so in that case we are going to add an action button to our table and that means i'm going to add one more table cell here table cell it's going to be aligned to the right just like every other one and it's going to be actions and in table body we are going to also add a table cell as well table cell and in this case inside this table cell in this case the alignment is going to be center so it's going to be align is equal to center and in, inside this table cell we would like to add an a delete icon so i'm going to add an icon button icon button and the icon is going to be a delete icon now the icon we want to use here is going to be the color is going to be secondary now when we click on this we want to display a pop-up that says confirm delete so i'm going to say on click we want to display a pop-up so it's going to be an arrow function that calls the handle confirm open delete anyway i just give it a function name so let's call it handle confirm open handle confirm open. so this is going to open a model and provide the key as a product id the selected product id we don't have this function so we are going to i'm going to go ahead to create this function handle confirm open so i'm going to copy it and paste so that we can create it okay so i'm going to place it here comes handle confirm open and handle confirm open is going to take the id so it's going to be an arrow function that takes the id of of the selected product as parameter it's going to set the selected id so i'm going to have selected id the id and we are going to then set confirm uh set confirm open to true now we need the set selected id and also the selected id we need those states so we are going to be using the use state hook to set the initial values for those so under here i'm going to say const i'm going to say so const delete id and set delete id is going to be use state null so we also have the uh the open as well so we also need to have to have the the confirm open and set confirm open to control when the model is open and closed so i'm going to say set confirm open and set confirm open equal to use state and is also going to be null actually the this case is set confirm or the confirm open is going to be initially is going to be false because the model will be closed when the application starts off so this is actually set delete id so again having having created handle confirm open we also want to handle confirm close so it's going to just do the opposite so i'm going to just put them side by side so it's going to be handle confirm close it's going to be setting the delete id to the null and it's going to set confirm open uh to false uh, set confirm open to false so now we need to have a model that actually displays when the user clicks on the confirm on the open uh on the on the delete in the so this this button when you click on on click is going to handle confirm open and it's going to open a model so i'm going to provide that model so I'm going to paste, I have a model, so I'm going to paste it right here. So it's a simple model. I'm going to just explain it to you. So it's a dialog. We have dialog open, confirm open. And when you close it, it's going to handle confirm close. The dialog title is here. 
the dialog contains and the action is handle confirm close. We already wrote this function. And when you click on the button delete, we are going to have a function called handle delete that actually deletes or makes the API call to delete the item from the table. So now we are going to write the function handle delete that makes the API call. So I'm going to go right up here and I'm going to write the function handle const handle delete. So now learn how we are going to make API call uh, asynchronously to retrieve uh, to perform uh, delete. That's basically similar to what we did when we did the API call for products. So it's about the same thing. So I'm going to say is equal to async and we are going to pass in the ID and we are sure that it's possible that this might fail. So we are going to enclose in a try catch. Now we're going to await. We are going to use the same library Axios uh, this time dot delete. And we are going to provide the HTTP endpoint for delete. And I'm going to enclose in a backfix and it's going to be HTTP localhost for 8080 and it's going to be slash product. And I'm going to uh, use an interpolation, a string interpolation to add the ID. So it's going to be dollar ID. We are going to await it. So when it comes, we are then going to set the product. So when, once it comes, we are going to set the product uh, by uh, removing, because we want to refresh the table on the UI. We want to remove this product from um, from the UI from the from the existing product. So I'm going to just call the set product, and we are going to just filter out this one that has been deleted. So it's going to be the filter and product is not equal to product here yeah, that's the parameter products id is not equal to id and we are going to then handle the confirm close to close the dialog box so in this case is when everything have gone well but if ever, if something goes wrong we are going to catch the error and so it's going to be error and we are going to log out a message to the console console the log error occurred and i'm going to just put the error message and then i'll display an alert on the screen there was an error deleting the products allow him to try again please try again so hopefully we should be able to delete a product now why do we have this error oh yeah i see okay so there's going to be an arrow function. Okay. I think everything should be fine. Let me just do a final check before we test. So let me just save all. Hopefully, oh, there's error. Ah, yeah, we need to import the dialog title, dialog content, dialog action, and blocking. So I think all this is coming from a material. So we are going to just go to where do we have this? So it's going to be here, botting and dialog, dialog title, dialog content, dialog actions. I think that should be it. So let me reload. What else? Delete icon is not defined and we are going to also import delete icon. Okay, so the delete icon is coming from somewhere else. It's coming from the icons. So I'm going to say delete icon, import delete icon from... So let's save everything and let's see where we are. So everything works. So let's go back to our table. Oh, <laughs> this is giving error message. Okay, so sorry, I want to clean up this. So let's go back to set the view heights of this table. I think I'm playing around with the view height and this off causing this problem. Um, so save. Uh, so let's try to delete one item. So I'm going to delete this one. Delete ultra soft pillow. Delete. There was an error. So let's check our console to know what this error is. Axios error, error called deleting. Let's okay, so if you take a look at the handle delete, I think the URL should be slash products slash ID. So it's not product, but product. So if you take a look at the API, I just checked that the API delete mapping is product ID. So it's not products, but product. So let's fix that. And then we, we are sure this is going to work. So let me save everything. Let's go back to check. So let's 
reload the page so let's try to delete so i'm going to click on ultra soft pillow and delete and it deletes you so you can see it deleted so we have implemented delete so the next thing i want us to implement is the ads so we are going to be adding a new button here and with that button we are going to add a new item okay so the first thing we want to do is to add a button to this table container so before the table i'm going to just add a button so it's going to be button slash button so these button slash button we are going to i'm going to just put in between we have add new this is going to be the text so we want to give it a variant like a style so the style is going to be contains okay so these are button and let's just make sure it appears so these are add new button it appears i will like to kind of display this button at the edge like i want to align it to the left so to do that i'm going to use a flex box i'm going to put a box around this button uh let's put the box around it and this box is going to be a flex box so this uh, button so this box is going to be a flex box so i'm going to say display is if i think this will move our button to the beginning so let's just yes so this is what i wanted to achieve okay so once we click on this button nothing happens so we want to add an on click event to open a dialog box a form where you can fill some items and so first i want to create the dialog box now i have the dialog box so i'm going to uh copy and paste it and then i simply contains entry uh form entry so it's similar to delete just that it contains additional entries for for different input fields okay so i'm adding a second dialog box here so add a second dialog box i'm pasting it now let me just shift this one down so it's basically the same only that in this second dialog box there is a bunch of fields just align this we have the test field which is product name another field description another field brand another field acquisition date and so on we also have in this field we have handle close that closes the dialog box and we also have another function handle add products as usual we are going to go to create the use a use state hook to create the initial values of the state so in this case we should be having the pro the new product so i'm going to come here and say const so we have a new product i'm going to call it new product and set new product is going to be use state use state and use state and we have this now we need to set the initial value of the state which is id is going to be this the name is going to be the name description is going to be the uh, empty so initially this is going to be an empty form that we are going to display for the user to fill the brand is going to be empty and the acquisition date is going to be empty and also the price is going to be empty so this is the initial state uh, when this uh, form loads when this form loads okay so i'm going to save everything let's just make sure everything is working yeah so this is okay so all this we've not actually written the handle change function so the next thing i'm going to write is the handle change function for the text so when you enter the text you want to actually set the state uh, for the new product when you are entering the text so we are going to write the handle change um because if you take a look at all the text boxes they have handle change okay so let's go ahead to do that i'm going to write the function const handle change Handle change is coming from the text, so it's going to be an event raised by the input event on the text box. And what is going to happen here is that we are going to set the new product by updating it with whatever the user is typing. So we are going to use the spread operator, the new product, and we are going to say either target.name. Okay, so the name, and we are going to set it to 
we are going to set the value of we are going to set the value of that input to whatever the user is typing in. So it's going to be either target dot value. So this is basically our handle change. Um, so we also have text field is not defined, and also handle product handle add product product is not defined. So let's first import text field, and I think text field is coming from Material UI. So let's go to Attic side, just maybe break this down. Um, so here I'm just going to add text field is coming from Material UI, and we have handle change right here. Okay, okay. So now we need the actual function to make the call to add the API call to add a new product. So it's going to be exactly like uh, like this one, just uh, a little bit of difference because after adding the product, we are going to also empty the text box, text boxes. So let's write this function to add a new product. So this function is going to be handle add product. It's going to be handle add product and it's going to be an async function. So it's going to take the states of uh, the current product and it's going to use it to make an API call. Again, we are going to do a try catch an error of course. We are going to catch error and it's going to be we are going to console the uh, console log the error. So console that log. Okay, so now let's make the API call here. Let's let's write the con uh, function to make the API call. Again, we are going to simply call the Axios to make the post request, and we are going to get a response. We are going to get a response is equal to async call async call to the Axios the post because it's a post request this time. HTTP. I think it's the same url where we also retrieve all the products let me just write it out local host at pop 8080 and it's going to be product and so when we get a response we are going to use the spread operator to update the new product so we have a new product and now there's something about the price we are going to update the price because actually we have a product returns okay but we're also going to update the price to become a float because if we try to display the price uh, on the UI, uh, it will it will not it will throw an error because it has to be a float. So the price we are going to update it to uh, we are going to pass the float because what that was what is returned. So it's going to be new product dot price. Okay, so this is. This is our response uh, coming. We get a response. We add a new product. The product are, is returned as a new product. And we are now going to update the product in the UI with the new product we just added. So we are going to call the site uh, product and we are going to use the spread operator to update it with the new product we just received. Response.data. We are refreshing the UI by adding or appending the new data that just came in. And finally, we are going to simply set the new product to be empty. So in that case, I'm going to just paste the... Here we simply, after we retrieve the new product, we update the, update the table, we refresh, or we set the, the state to become uh, blank once again. And one more thing we have to do here is to handle close. So it will close the dialog box. Uh, we'll go ahead to save everything. Handle add product is not defined. Okay, so I think we also need handle close. So I'm going to just create this function const handle close equals so handle close equal to it's going to be an arrow function and it's simply going to set open we set open to false, but I don't think we already have the use state hook for open uh, for the open state. So we are going to I'll go ahead to create it here. So I'm going to say const open open and set open equal to use state. Use state is going to be false. Initially is false. So this is for Op opening and closing dialog boxes. So when it's open or uh, open is false 
or could be true. Okay, so in this case, when we handle close, we set open to false. So I go ahead to save everything, and I think everything worked successfully. I will go to. We are going to now try to add a new item, and let's see if we succeed. So I'm going to say so nothing happened because we've not added an event to our button. So we are going to our button, and we are going to add an event to the button, and that is going to be handle click open on is equal to handle click open so this function i think we've not written this function let's just check so handle click open is not being written is we've not written the function so handle click open is simply the opposite of handle close so i'm going to simply copy this and just paste it and i'm going to call it handle click open and it's going to be it's going to set open to true it's going to set open to true and that is going to open the dialog box and it's going to populate the state for the new product so i'm going to save all and let's go ahead to click so now it displays the dialog box and i'm going to try to add a new product so i'm going to say test price is 50.6 add product okay so it seems everything works so you can see the text product uh, the test product we just added right now is working perfectly well okay so we've completed the delete we've completed add new the next is the updates so let's go ahead to add the button for the updates in the table okay so so we are going to the table and we are going to i'll go ahead to simply copy this icon delete and create the same icon this time for update so i'm going to just create a new one and this is going to be an edit icon uh edit icon and this going to be secondary that's fine and this time we are going to be handle handle confirm open but in this case we are going to handle confirm open edit because we are going to be opening a different uh model the model for edit so let me go and import the edit uh, icon so i think edit icon also comes from so we are going to duplicate this and then we we change the name to edit edit icon is it will be slash edit I, I think now we have our icons working but we, we don't have the handle confirm open edit so i'm going to take out this let's just see that we have the icon showing up on the ui if i go to the ui you can see the edit icon the the icon is sim is a pencil symbol okay so let me add back this so now we need to create the the handler for the confirm uh ed confirm open edit before we do that we need the dialog box uh, the model for edit uh, for editing uh, the the selected fields. So the model for uh, editing selected field is similar to the model for, for adding a new. I'm also going to paste it and let's take a look at what is there. It's about the same thing. So this is it. Model for editing product. So it's the same, except that the value now is the edit products right and on change is going to be handle change edit because we are now editing and changing an existing product and that is why we need a different change event and also a different product which is actually the selected product so the next thing we want to do is we now want to create a number of functions we need the open edit the handle close edit and we need the handle change edit and of course we need the edit product state so let's take it one after the other so the first thing we want to do is to create the open edit and again as usual we are going to create the open edit which sets open the and uh, the open dialog box let's go to put it in the right place so we are going to come here so it's about the same so it's going to, be, it's going to become open edits and set open edit is going to be use state use uh state and the initial value for this uh model is going to be false so this model variable is going to be false because it's going to be closed initially then we need the function set open edit so we need the setup for that as well 
Okay, so to set the open edit, we need to, this will happen when the user clicks on the edit button. So we are going to write the function handle click open edit because if you take a look at the table, the button on the table, let's see, it says handle confirm open edit. No. So the name is actually handle click open edit. That's the name of this function. So handle click open edit, that's the name of the function. And we are going to then write the function right now. So it's going to be const handle handle click open edit and this function is going to take the product and it's going to display the product on the on the dialog on the um, form in the dialog. So we are going to set a dit pro uh, set a dit product. I'm going to set it to the product. The next I'm going to set open edit to true. Okay, so now handle click open edit takes the product and not the product ID. So if we go back, let's just make sure that handle click open edit for editing takes the products and not the product ID, right? Okay, so now we want to set the edit product when the button is clicked, right? So we want to set the edit product. Uh, so in this case, we have new product and we set new product. Uh, now we want to have the same for the edit. So I'm going to create the state as well. I'm going to use this use state hook to create the same for the edit product. So in this case, the product is not a new product, but the edit product sets edit product, right? And the ID for the edit product is going to be null because we don't need to update the ID. When you are editing a product, you cannot update the ID. We have the edit product, uh, we have it to be the ID is null and we have uh, we have the name and the description and all that fields to be null. This is going to be populated when the set edit product is called and the set edit product is called when the user clicks on the link on the on the table and that is going to call the set edit product and then is going to set it using the product that was selected. I think if we if we if we try to test this application, what is going to happen is that we will not have this update product. We've not written the API call for this. But I want to kind of display what is selected. So I want to save everything just to make sure that it displays what is selected. So handle close edit is not being written. So let's go ahead to write the handle close edit. So const handle close edit equals open edit because this is a different dialog box and I'm going to set it to false. I'm going to save everything. Handle change edit is not being written as well. So the handle change edit is to be similar to handle change but in this case we are working with the product that is selected so let's go to see so you see handle change now we need the handle pro uh, handle change edit as well handle change edit uh, is raised by the input input component on the form and we are going to set the edit product in this case we set the edit product and we are going to use the product that was is being edited and then we are going to use it to set the inputs um the input values of the input field so we are going to use the spread operator once again we are going to edit this and we are going to update the input field that is currently selected or currently in focus with the value being entered in that input field e.target the value we have this to be e okay so at this point if i click on edit i want to have the form opened in edit mode as you can see cancel now we don't have so if you go ahead to try to update nothing happens because we've not written the function to update so i'm going ahead to um write the handler for that in the edit model so in the edit model, we have the update product 
and I think I have the handler on the clipboard. I hope it's still there. Yes, the handler is uh, called handle edit product. So if I save, I think it's going to give me an error that says handle edit product uh, is not defined. So I'm going to go ahead to uh, write the function handle edit product. It's simply going to be like one of these ones. We are going to make an, make an API call. We are going to make an API call. So it's going to, it's going to become handle edit, handle edit product, that's the name, all right? Is an async function. So now we are going to make the same API call. We are going to try because it's possible this can fail. So we are going to get the response. Uh, const response is equal to await axios dot put and specify the HTTP and the, the, the HTTP endpoint. So I'm going to be using backticks to enclose it because I'll be doing some string interpolation. HTTP and it's going to be localhost at port 8080 slash product slash and now we need the id of this product right we need the id of this product being edited so i'm going to just put it there uh, it's going to be edit product.id because the edit product is set when you click on the edit uh, edit link for the particular product is set the edit product and then you can have the id so just to verify if you go down to the table, if you go down to the table, so you have the handle open edit, uh, handle open edit. So this function sets the edit product, right? So you set the edit product. So if you take a look at the hook, so you can see this, uh, the set edit product is set uh, right here, uh, set edit product. And this happens when the user clicks on the when the handle open edit is clicked, the edit product is set. Of course, when the user is also entering items in the text boxes, it also updates the, edit, the product being edited. So let's continue from where we, well, where we stop. Okay, so we have the edit product, we fetch the ID, and then we will, we will update the price of the edit product to be a float. So it's going to be a big product because we are going to we are going to uh, ensure that it is a number. So we are going to update it to be uh, a number, a float, so that it, it can be saved. So it's going to be the price. I'm going to update it to pass float and a big product dot uh, price. I think. Okay. Okay. Sorry, this was my mistake. <laughs> okay. Um, so we have our response now, which is the edited product. Now we are going to then update the, uh, the list of items displayed in the UI. So I'm going to call the set products and I'm going to just remove or update the product being edited. So it's going to be dot map product being edited and we are going to so product.id so we are going to check if that is the correct product then if that is if the id is the same then we are going to update the product uh in the in the list so it's going to be edit products if it's the same dot id we are going to just replace that product it's going to be response.data Okay, so let's understand what's going on here. So we are trying to update the products being displayed in the UI. So we are going to map and for each product, any product that the ID matches, we are going to replace it with response.data if, if the ID matches. If it doesn't, then we leave the product the way it is. So that's how it is. Okay, so let's now catch the error here. So first I'm going to just put a semicolon. If this succeeds, everything goes well, I'm going to go ahead to close. Handle close. I'm going to close the dialog box. Close edit. And I'm going to go ahead to catch error. If an error occurs, I'm going to display an, uh, an error on the console. And I want to give him an opportunity to 
retry so i'm going to uh provide an alert okay so i think this should be it uh let me save everything let's just check if everything works okay so let's try to update uh this echo smart led ball i'm going to say echo small led ball tutorial real <laughs> because this is a C update products and it works so let's try to delete just to make sure we are doing a round trip to make sure everything works. Delete works and let's try to add another, another product, another brand. Acquisition date is eight and the price is dot nine. Add product is another product that see right here. So this is basically how to create an application and perform crowd operation in React uh, using a Spring, uh, Spring Boot API. I would like to stop here. I would like to thank you for viewing. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Click on that subscribe button to subscribe so that you don't miss any update from me. And also leave me a comment if you have any challenges whatsoever. Remember, coming soon, we are building a complete full uh, Remember we are remember uh, remember coming soon we are going to build a complete application, a complete end-to-end -end full stack application using React UI and Spring Boot API. Hope you'll be there. For now, I'm going to stop here. I remain kind on the tech pro and I'm always there for you.